um, page 93 in the Safer Overcoming Folly, the second paragraph. But just to recap briefly what we began talking about yesterday is this concept of thirst, hatsameya. Again, that's a word in the Pusik in Deuteronomy and Dvarim. <clears throat> when it talks about kibishiris libi yelech, and then it says hatsmeya. So the, uh, the Rebbe Rashab says hatsmeya is hates meya. The hay is thirsty. And he, he's been talking about this idea. What does it mean the hay is thirsty? So he said hay is malchus. Malchus is the transition point between the upper and the lower. So while malchus is part of the upper, it's on a high. Although it's the last man on the totem pole, it's still the totem pole. But when Malchus, the last man on the totem pole, has to go into far and strange territory, i.e. Bria Yetzira Atzilas, uh, Bria Yetzira Nasia, the world of for- creation, formation, and action, leaving the world of Atzilus, it's very strange and foreign to, it, to its experience, and it yearns, it desires, it has a rutsui, a yearning, a running. It desires to be back with Elikus, with godliness. And the Zohar also uses the concept of it cries. It's crying. Why is it crying? It's crying because it's not comfortable here. This is what we learned yesterday. So now he's going to continue talking about the hay. And uh, maybe we'll learn one or two English footnotes because they, they, they're very good and they explain a little better things. But let's let's begin inside first the text in the Hebrew. Kihine. Kihine ois hei shuchai is kol ha'ilam ois. The ois hei, which is the letter, Moshe, that enlivens all the worlds. Nikra shechina. We call this shechina. The divine presence. Lefi, why do we call it Shechina? Why do we call Hey Shechina? The Rebbe says. Lefi shayoyredes umislabeshes bebriya yitzira asiyah. What does the word Shechina mean? It comes to the word Shochein, Shochein, Shin Chof Nun, to rest, to dwell. This animation of godliness rests and dwells within the three lower worlds called Briya yitzira asiyah. So that's why we give the, a name to this godly experience called Shechina. Ukumesh Kosov, as it says, Vosuli Mikdash Shanti Besechem, Hashem says, make for me a sanctuary, and I will dwell amongst them. Hainu Shebehechel Kotshe HaKadoshim, in the room, in the chamber of the Holy of Holies, you know, we're talking about the once a year time when the clay and God went into the Kotshe HaKadoshim, there was the primary revelation of Shechina. And from there, <coughs> it extended itself, an emanation of, its, of itself, extends from the Kochi Kochim to enliven the entire world. And this explains to us why we make a big deal about the Kochi Kochim on Yom Kippur. Why? 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 I mean, you know, okay, the Kayan Gogol went in there, but what? Why? So the question is on the Kayan Gogol. Why did he go in there? The answer is Hashem told him to in the Torah. Why, why did Hashem say so? In other words, you have to go back and ask yourself, what is special about the Kochi Kadoshim? So Kabbalah and Chassidah say, because the Shechina was begilu in the Kochi Kochim. Now, I want you to think about the, the, the approach that Kabbalah and Chassidus has to a physical space. What, what Kabbalah and Chassidus are doing are shining and uh, shining, explaining to us that the physical space becomes special and significant only because the Shechina is there. If you strip the Shechina from the Kotshe Kadoshim, yes, we know the, 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 the rule in Chazal, Kedusha Loi Zozim and Kaima. Holiness does not depart completely from the place. But nevertheless, it's dark and, and dingy. Right? And Rabbi Kiva says, I went up there, what did I see? Shaul and fox, foxes 
stamping all over, including the Kotsha, uh, desolation. And today, Rahman Islam, we have what we have over there. So, therefore, what makes the Kotsha Kotsha special? That the Shekhin is Begili. Shmuel, not just that the Shekhin is there, it's there Begili. And that makes it special. And because you only it's there, Begilu, it's revealed over there, it has the Kayach, the power, to extend itself, as he says, Lahach is Kol Oilam. And, and, you know, here, again, I always try to point out, if you take this thought that I just shared with you, that we just learned in a few brief words, and you meditate on this, and you think about it, I guarantee you, you'll want to jump into the Kotche Kadoshim. You, you, you'll have an affinity for the Kotche Kadoshim, even though we're not there. Yes, Mu. Yeah, the author Rebbe mentioned at the very end of the first Talis in Tanya how the, the, the Shina came down from the higher realms without first being established each, in each world. It came like a, like a direct, like an express train. Correct, like correct, no. correct. Chapter 52 in Tanya, Shmu was alluding to, I believe. And, um, and it's interesting because there's something that Ashab says here that seems to contradict what it says there, but we're not going to go there. If you're interested, you'll study note number 130, where he talks about that seeming contradiction. But I, I, I don't want to go into it. I want to stay more to the text. So this opens up for us a whole view of what Kachi Kadoshim is. And just for a moment, if you extrapolate that, it's the same idea. What's the difference being... In a shul or being in a house? You know, the, you know the joke, where did you dive in this morning? At the kaisel. Really? Yeah, my kaisel, my wall and my house. So, no, what's the difference between this kaisel and the kaisel of my ravi? What, you got to be kidding. You got to be kidding. Your kaisel depends if you slept enough, what mood you woke up in, and, you know, what's going on, Right? The Kaisal Amaravi doesn't depend on you. It's there. You understand? The, shri, the Kachi Kedoshim is a mindset. It's a mindset that a Yid can transcend all of his Gashmias and all of his stuff and say, I am now in the Kachi Kedoshim. And someone will look at you and say, you're out of your mind. You're in Ramat Gimel, Aleph, Borough Park. What do you mean you're in the Kachi Kedoshim? No, no, no. All of these things are an idea and an experience which manifest themselves at certain times in a physical place, in a physical expression. So, of course, the Kachi Kedoshim, physically the Kachi Kedoshim, no question about it. But what makes it Kachi Kedoshim is that the Shechina is Begilui. So imagine the Shechina is Begilui at your dining room table. Your dining room table is similar. It has an energy that's similar to the Kachi Kedoshim. And, and, yes, Hillel. I better, I, better, I, better go, I better go dust off the dining room table. Uh, more, more than dust off. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's continue the next paragraph. I, I think this was important to talk about a little bit. Okay. Take, for example... Chayes haNeshama, the energy of the Neshama, Amachayes haGuf, that enlivens the body. It gives the Guf life. Ikir Hashra Osa Hupa Halef. Where Moshe Myers, where is the main energy of the Neshama sustain enlivening the Guf? It's in the Lev, in the heart. Understand? Because the Lev, the heart, Umisham. And from the heart, the blood flow is nimshach. It's drawn. It's extended to the two, all the two hundred and forty-eight limbs. So this is the moshul. So the Rebbe says now the nimshul is vehechol kotche kadoshim. What is considered the room, the chamber of the holy of holies? Who halev shall call ha'elam? It's the heart of the entire world. That's the kotche kadoshim yaini. The heart. Like the Rebbe told, the Rebbe told um, this fellow who I know, when he was angry and upset in 1973, you know, and he was a Brooklyn boy who grew up from, and he grew up in yeshiva, and then he made a U-turn, and he went very far, and he was angry, and he came to the, and they, and he came to the Rebbe, Elliot, Elliot, my friend Elliot, and he said, 
Who is God? In Yiddish, where is God? That famous gem video, which you need to look and learn and listen over and over because it's so powerful. And the Rebbe says at the end, it's in your heart. Belev. 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 This is what we're talking about here. The Kotche HaKadoshim is the heart shall call Ha'ilam of the entire world. Which cause of Bezoyar, it says in Zoyar. Al Kain, Hoya Boy Hashor Sashchina. That's why. The Shekhinah rested in the Kotche HaKadoshim because it's the heart. So if, you, if the heart is, is well, the body is well. Which Shmuel alluded to earlier. As Alter Rebbe says there, that there is also the room, the chamber, the Kodesh Kadoshim in Bria Yitzir Asira, but we'll leave that for another time, what that means. Continue next page, 95. The Gemara in Chulin speaks about the diminishing of the moon. And the moon was upset. And the moon said, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, why do I get this every month? Large, medium, small, small, medium, large. And the sun is one and the same. So, and this is the idea the Gemara says in Chulin, Lechi Umaati Asatzmech, go and diminish yourself. Shahamiyat Hu Inyin Yiridoso, the miyat is the idea of its descent, Liyais Reish Lashaulim, where it becomes the head to foxes, foxes, that's a metaphor. It takes humility to create. It takes humility to inspire. It takes humility to have an impact on Yitzira, on Bria Yitzira Rasia. You want to make a difference in the world? You have to be humble. If you're a Yesh, you're a Balgaiva, you will be rejected, if not today, tomorrow. So the Abish that told the Levana, Levana, moon, you're upset that you are diminishing every month from being big and large and strong to being tiny and small and almost non-seeable, etc. That specific activity that you experience is the, is the, is the springboard for continuing God's energy in, a, in, in, an, in, an, in an arena, in a place which is antithetical to God compared to Atsilas. Priya, Yitzira, and Asiya, in comparison to Atsilas, is antithetical. Okay? It's not as apparent. So in order for Priya, Yitzira, and Asiya to have a connection, it requires a bitl on part of the energy. And the Levana is like the hay. Let's continue. Look what he says. The Leirotas are lady. But the moon did not want to d- 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 lower itself. Well, the might is and to minimize itself. No, it says, no, no, you go and lower yourself. I want to stay a big, big, big ball, a big moon. Why not? <laughs> it said, what? Why are you sending me into these worlds where there's a mixture of good and bad? I don't want to be there. I'm very happy here in Atsilas. I like being in Borough Park in Yerushalayim. Why do I have to go out to Wyoming and Afghanistan? Etc. And worse, you want me to come into the physical world? Not the spiritual world of action, but the physical world where free choice has been given to man the Yuchu Chas Vasholem, and he can, God forbid, Livchayr Gambara, he can also choose bad. And by doing so, listen to this, by us expressing our free will, we schlep the godly energy into the shtus, into the stupidity. It's not enough, Moshe, that we are foolish. <laughs> we draw the foolishness, we draw godliness into the foolishness. What chutzpah? But that's what we do. Al derech ragleo yoyedes mavis. Posik in Mishlei. Ragleo, her feet go down to death. See, this explains that this refers to the hay of Malchus, 
that lowers itself to Bria Yitzira Sira from Atsilus, and it's a place of death in comparison to its position in Atsilus. Uksiv, and it says, Hashem Itom, Hashem who rests with them, Betoich to Mosom, in amidst their impurity. Hashem is with us all times. <laughs> Could you imagine we're doing a sin and we think no one knows about it, only us? Guess what? Hashem is right there with you and He knows about it. Maybe you fooled people, but you didn't fool Him because He's right there with you. That's what the Torah says. Forgive that this is a forgiveness for holiness, from, from the contamination, the impurity that you didn't contaminate it. In other words, you go into shul, you go into a base medish, you go into the, 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 the sanctuary, the mikdash, and you do your shtus there. So now you got to cleanse it. It needs a good COVID cleansing with sprays and suits and mices because it's contaminated. V'zehu es mishkan Hashem timei. And he just bring in more psukim to bring out the same idea. And this is the idea that the tent of Hashem, the dwelling of Hashem, Tamei, you contaminated, you made him pure. Says the Rebbe. Now we understand what it means that the Shechina, that the divine presence is in Golos, is in exile. How does that happen? It happens through man's bad activities here or below. We create a situation where the Shechina is now in exile. We make the Shechina be in exile. Ukumesh Kosov, and he quotes from Yeshaya the Posik, Ubifish Echem, Shulcha Imchem. For your sins, your mother was expelled. For our sins, your sins, our mother was expelled. The Shechina is the aim. Right? Malchus, Ima, right? She gets expelled because of our, our sins. Continuing. As we, as we said earlier, there is a descent of the level of hay. It, 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 it's lowered. And it goes through the progressive chain of of a downward spiral from level to level and mata mata very low below it's so filtered that it be, it invests itself in the ten emanations but not of kedusha of translucent light known as the klipa noiga in other words Moshe, there is wisdom and kindness associated with Klippa too. It's called in Kabbalah, do you ever come across this Hillel in your le- teach, le- learnings? It's called Chesed de Le'umazeh, or Chesed de Yishmoel. There's Chesed de Avram, and Chesed de Yishmoel. The Altenev brings in the Geras HaKodesh, I believe, too. Right? There's kindness coming from Avram, that's Kedusha and Holiness. And there's kindness there's coming from Shmoel. What? Time, right, 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 right. So it's chesed. You understand? It's chesed. It's being kind, but it's misplaced kindness. And misplaced kindness, if it's at the wrong, misplaced, it's bad. It's no good. It's Yishmael. And this is something that you know is a difficult thing to decide whether it's. Chesed of Avram, Chesed Yishmol, says the Rebbe here, the Rashab, that when the energy of the hay descends, has a Yerida, it goes through all of a sudden this, tra- this change, albeit an outer change, but it's still a change, and what does it do? It then sees a problem, a negativity as good, and it says, here, let me give you some money to buy drugs. I'm being kind. You really are being kind. I, I, I just have to. But give him a sandwich. You know that he's going to use the money for something to destroy himself. Chesed of Yishmael. And the same is true for Gevura. The teacher in the school says, 
you know, he patches and he claps and he bullies and he berates. <laughs> the Rambam says you have to educate a child this way, really. The Rambam says that if you yourself are not angry and if you yourself are not upset and you purely use it as a method and even then it's challenged and harnessed, etc., and measured. You're expressing your frustration. You didn't have a good breakfast this morning, or you had a fight with your wife last night. So you have no business doing that in the classroom. And the same is true with the rabbi, and the teacher, and the employer, and ourselves, on and on and on. That's all, these are all examples of misplaced chesed. When is this able to happen? Only when there's an energy that vivifies you, and you have the energy in a sack, in golos, in exile, and now you use the energy for your outlandish desires and behavior. That's what he says right here. Let's continue. Hamashpa shefa v'chayiz al yedei, next page 97, top of Hamazolis. The klipos, what do they do? They give energy and vitality and, and life force through the mazolis, through the constellations. The chotzvah and through all the hosts of the heaven, vasorim shaleim, and the superiors that are above them. L'chol chai ha-gashmi haze, and they give life force to all of gashmi's. U'mishum that's why the Levana, okay, Avi, he goes back to the moon. That's why the moon did not want to diminish itself. You, you understand? Look, you can look at this Gemara and Chulin, the moon, you're so arrogant. Hashem says, be a moon, what right do you have to say not to be a moon? So the Rebbe explains to us here, the moon is coming from a good place. The moon says... <coughs> I don't want to give my energy to be used for cucumbers that people fress, excuse the expression, that people indulge in. And, and can you imagine the great sin of, 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 of eating cucumbers with a taiva? And worse, I don't want to do that. So the Gemara, Hashem says, Lechi ma'at atzmech. Go humble yourself. If I'm telling you to do it, you do it. And you know why you do it? Because it's good for you. Not just it's good for me, it's good for you. Because it brings out pitful, humility. And it brings out a certain a part of you, who you are, who's really something that's special for people. So the Rebbe says at the end, That's why initially the moon did not want to go into this, to lower, to diminish itself. We learned in the beginning of this chapter, that the tenth, that the, the letter Yud is the source of souls. Ois Hey, the letter Hey, Mekoyer Chayos Oilamis is the source of the vitality of all worlds. Nikreis Shchina, we also call it Shchina. Heichel Kotche Kedoshim Leiv HaOilam, the chamber of the Holy of Holies is the heart of the world. Lechiumat Yatzmech, go and diminish yourself. And descend in the lowest levels. And this builds you stronger and gives you a tremendous yearning. And through an evil act, we cause Golos Hashkina. Now I want to go back for a moment. Please allow me to go back to note number... Um, I want to go back to note number, where is it, about, about the Mayim, oh, note number 126, for those that have the Sefer, and it's a shem, soon you'll all have the Sefer, with the Abish's help. So here we spoke about Mayim Masmichim Kol Mine Tainuk. Water gives vegetation to all types of pleasures. He says it nicely here, I just want to read it with you. The source of physical pleasures in water is water which promotes the growth of pleasurable things. In addition, juice or liquid found in foods and making them tasty comes from the water, in quotes, 
within them. So similarly, the element of water in the soul, in the nefesh, is the source for one's desire from pleasures. That's what the Bitla Reb is Imra Bina, and also in Tanya chapter 1. So in other words, it's not just water, but any type of liquid and juices within is associated with the liquid, with the water. So water is the, that aspect of the neshama that's associated with pleasure. Now, please understand, it's not only bad, it's also, it could be good, it's neutral, right? The four elements of the neshama, Eish, Ruach, Mayim, Ofa, that the Alter Rebbe quotes in chapter 1 of Tanya, you must know that they are neutral, they're pariv. And it's up to the individual whether he spins it to the right or the left. And in this case that we're discussing, where Malchus is taken out of context and, uh, and kind of abused to just benefit yourself through indulgences, that's what the Rashab is talking about here. But it does not mean to say that inherently it's bad. It's not. It's neutral. So you could take the same water and make a brach on it and, 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 and make a beautiful garden. When you take water and you use it to make a beautiful garden and a person walks by and he smells the wonderful flowers, that's Kvaldik. It reminds me of a story. The Rebbe Sanchai Mushka, the Rebbe's wife, on President Street in Crown Heights. You know, President Street in Crown Heights is a very regal block. Before uh, Yidin moved in, in the 50s, 40s, 60s, um, it was a block mostly of Yidin, but, you know, wealthier Jews for, and, and, and more distinguished Jews. For example, Mayor Beam, the former mayor of New York City, I heard lived on President Street. The Boston Rebbe was the next door neighbor to the Rebbe. So you had the Rebbe, you had the Boston Rebbe, and, and then there were other prestigious, more known people on those few blocks. So once the Rebbe Tzachai Mushka uh, came out of her house and she saw a lawn that was not kept up. So she went to the Shamish, to the aide, and she said, here's money, go out, Buy nice flowers, have a gardener come, and make that garden spiffy and great. Did you ever hear that? I heard that. Why? Because it's Hashem's creation. For whatever reason, you're not taking care of your garden. So here we're going to use water and flowers and make a real beautiful garden that smells nice, that's pleasant to look at. So water is a neutral item. And water is not just a source of negative pleasure, but it can be the, ple the source of the highest pleasure. And the same is true for Eish, Ruach, and Ofa, the three other elements. And that, so that's what, but over here, in, in this context, since he's talking about the descent of the hay, he says it the way he says it. One more note here. And that is... I just wanted to make, while we're on the subject of water, I just wanted to make a brief... Uh, a uh, remark that uh, the 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 Kamarna writes about his his Rebbe and his uncle the uh of Zidichov, the Zidichov Rebbe. Yeah. Who, that he once remarked on himself. He said, "I never so much as had a glass of water without making a yichud." Without uh, he said on himself. So the Kamarna explained what what was the yichud he made. He said that the Shefa, the brachas from Hashem all come through certain pipelines into this, to our world, like we're talking about here. And he said, the Yichud was that they should always go through the right pipes. Okay. I, I, I think it's a nice story. I would have thought that the Yichud is more the, the, the names of Hashem and the different gematrias, but I hear, I hear the story. Yeah, I, 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 I'm convinced that the Tzvi Hirsch of Zidit Shoyev did that as well. But if you look into the Sefer, it's full of Yehudim, so I'm sure he, he, he was into, you know, he did Yehudim. But, but it's yeah, a good... It's, no, that was his, yeah, that was his thing. That was his thing. Yeah. But, that, but yeah. it, 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 to me, the, the story you shared, Hillel, is, uh, is, a, is a profound lesson. It's a profound lesson that even if you don't know the particulars of the Yehud, have one thing in mind, I'm making a yichud. The Rebbe told people, and, and this, I'll tell you another, an example. 
The Rebbe told people who asked him, what kavanas should I have when I go into the mikveh? You know, we don't go into the mikveh because it's a spa, or your back's hurting you, you need a good uh, uh, hot water. I mean, that's also nice. But we go into a mikveh because it's halik, it's holy. So yeah. someone asked the Rebbe, what should I think about in the mikveh? And then he asked, and I know that in the Svarim it says that there's a yichudim. So the Rebbe answered him, you know, the Rebbe is not going to, whoever, I don't know who asked, but he's not going to tell him, do this yichud, that yichud, he probably felt he wasn't that level, or that's not the Chabad way, whatever the case. He said to him, just have a mind that whatever yichudim, the Kabbalah Svarim and Hasidic Svarim bring, you want, and you're, and, and, and you're, and you're, and you're connecting with those yichudim. Nice. And, and that and that's important because we go to the mikveh, you know, you know it, it, it's important. And I heard this from my rebbe's, my teachers in yeshiva. This is the way they taught me because because when I heard that there's these yichudim in the mikveh, and then I saw my teacher, Rabbi Marlo Oliver Shalom, who when he went, I saw this when I was 14 or 15 in the Lubavitch yeshiva in the Ocean Park where the yeshiva had a mikveh in the building in the basement. I don't know if you, you know Yoni. And we went, when we came to Yeshiva, we davened in the morning, we went to the mikveh either before or after, depending on the timing. Anyway, so I noticed the way he went to the mikveh. First he immersed upright, then he spread himself out like a, a fish, and then he did a third one upright. I, I'm telling you what I remember from 15 years old, like it's yesterday. And I, so I said, this is very interesting. I don't go to the mikveh this way. And I had tremendous derech heretz, right? Malo, you know, besides his, his genius, he was my rebbe, my teacher. So I went over to him and I said, Rebbe, why do you go to the, why do you immerse the way you immerse? And he said to me that Rabbi Tenenbaum, who was our principal, he was a Jew from, from the, from the, from the, Atzvot, from the Holocaust, and he was very fine chosid, and a Talmud Chochem, he, was he, he was asked by the Rebbe to blow the shofar already from 1952 for the the, the of Musaf, and ever since then the Rebbe would blow only the first 30 tekiyos, and Rabbi Tenenbaum blew the rest the other 70, and he and he blew them like like it was you know bread and butter. It like no no impediments. It just went. He had a gavaldik way, way of blowing beautifully and clearly and and and, and flowed. So he, so the Rebbe told him that the morning of Rosh Hashanah, before davening at Tkiyas, he should go to the mikveh, uh, have in mind the kavanas of the Baal Shem Tov, of, 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 when, of how and what he's supposed to do in the mikveh, and then learn the mimer, of the of the of the Alter Rebbe and the Siddurs called uh, on on Tkia Schaefer. so he asked the Rebbe uh, like, <laughs> what kavanas to the Baal Shem Tov do you have in the mikveh? And you're talking about a person who was learned and a real Halega guy, you know. But still, so the Rebbe told him, up, My fish, God. first time straight, second time like a fish, yeah. third time up. And I think the Rebbe told him to do this three times, with a, with a break in between. Three sets of these three. Rabbi, he told this to Rabbi Marlo once, and Rabbi Marlo being the Jew he was, he did it every morning. And Chaim Dalfin happened to be there one morning seeing him doing it. And I asked him, and he told me, and that's the way I do it, and I'm sharing it with you. So here it is, a tradition that goes back, I guess, to the Baal Shem Tov, that the Rebbe revealed in 1952, and it's, it's now 2020, um, 70 years later, and the tradition continues. So th this is uh, all to the point of Hilla. You said that, you know, uh, the, the, of the Zidit Shoeva's Vart, I don't know the details of the Yichud, but what I know is that this is the way it should be done, and whatever the yichud is supposed to accomplish, it accomplishes. Moshe Myers, I think you wanted to say something. Yeah, Moshe. I don't hear you. Moshe, unmute yourself. Moshe, unmute yourself. Got you. Okay, I'm unmuted. Yeah. Uh, it's related to what you said previously in this uh, shear. Yes. You mentioned about the moon, moon waning, you know, from being big and small and all that. Right. The fluctuation. Is there a lesson we can learn from that, or is that too general, that... In, some, in our lives, things go in, in cycles. We have 
sometimes things are up and down or whatever. And is that a part of our humility, our lesson for learning humility, perhaps? Or? Absolutely. Otherwise, uh, it, it, it's not just a story in the Talmud or, 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 or an experience. It's something for us that that we don't want to get into certain situations because they're, down, they're dirty, they're not nice. They're, I don't mean to say it's, it's not where we want to be, but you have to, you have to get involved, you know? <laughs> we all want to, you know, sit in a kailal all day, all our life, and, and catch a bank, as they say, you know, squeeze the bench and have money rain down on top of you. It don't work that way. You gotta get, you gotta, you gotta make panosa. You gotta you, you study, and you gotta schwitz. Yeah, so it's a lesson, here. and it takes humility. It takes a lot of humility. So absolutely, Moshe, it's a lesson for us. Yes, Shmuel. Go ahead. I just wanted to mention regarding the, the general yichud uh, going to the mikvah. The Rebbe says the same thing in Hayom Yom regarding Shmuel Esrei in the Talmud. There's people who don't know all the yichudim in Shmuel Esrei to have a general kavana that uh, the fulfilling all those kabbalistic. Right, and you say that's a Hayoim Yoim? Is it a Hayoim Yoim? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember. Thank you. Okay, but the, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Vart is Richtig. Anyone else with any other questions or thoughts? No. Okay, anyway, Chevra, we'll learn tomorrow. Mitzvah Shem. Zai Gazunt, have a good day. Take care. Atzlacha. Bye. No. Yeah,